All right. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First agenda item tonight is the reorganization of the board and our selectment committee assignments. So, do we have any nominations for chair? Uh, yes, Mr. Lovichel. That's your motion? That is my motion. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. want to keep it ready. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You got it. All right, so. Oh, okay. Vice Chair, You're, you got it now. All right, so let's work on the committee assignments. What do we have? We are all, are, are, we, are we all looking to stay put where we're at, or do you want to switch things up, or what? I just want to stay put. I'm fine with that. Yeah, same here. It's, Okay, I'll make a motion that uh, we keep the same assignments as we had the past year. This right. past year. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That was easy. Look at that. I'm cruising right along. So Vice you chair, do a motion chair. for Vice Chair. chair. Oh, oh, okay. That's what I was confusing myself. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped ahead with the for Vice Chair. All right. So do we have a nomination for your Vice Chair now that I am now Chair? Sure. I'd like to nominate Bill Nelson as the Vice Chair. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. All right. Bill is vice chair. Super. Now we're moving on. All right. We have a scheduled speaker. Paul? Well, okay. Then we'll call him scheduled. All right. All right. <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, I would like to present the proposed zoning board members. All right. Yep. Uh, just so everyone knows, this is the um, chairman of the ZBA here in town, Paul Trembley. Um, we had a vacancy on the ZBA, and um, he filled that vacancy. And uh, want we'll to just give us a quick synopsis of who you've pulled in, and we'll get her sworn in as soon as she yeah, has. Susan Weiske, I've spoken with her on the phone. Uh, that was recommended by the board of selectmen, and she's agreed to be part of the board this, for the next three years or until she decides it's too boring to be on the board. <laughs> you, you meet all too often? Yes. <laughs> all right. So now we have Paul Tremley, Susan Weisby, Ernie Brown, David Anzaro, Richard Mauser, and Jessica Robichaud, secretary. All terms expire in 2018 except for Ernie Brown, who's 2016. So. It's a shame we didn't somehow mix them up more. So they all change at the same time. Yeah, they'll just get reelected. They're appointed. So we have to appoint them. Brian. So the, we have to appoint who? Just the whole board, the entire board. Oh, the whole board. We haven't done this yet. We haven't done any of them yet. Well, they will expire three years. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'll make a motion. Yeah, the other four are expired. So I'll, I'll make a I'll make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the chairman of the ZBA to accept uh, these five members: Paul, Susan. Ernie Brown, Dave Dancerall, and Richard Mauser to the Brookfield ZBA. Okay. Do we have a second? Uh, for discussion purposes, yes. Okay. I just would like to see us adjust the term so they're not all at the same time. What do you think? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I guess, can that be done? Could it do less than three years, though? I don't think you can do that because if there's a term that they were elected upon, you can't manipulate the terms, right? Who appoints are elected or appointed? These are appointed. And if we haven't reappointed them, and we're going to reappoint them now, we have to appoint for a three-year term. The, the situation we have is we didn't do it last year. And some, right, right. some expired in 14. Right. Yeah, I just remember we were had some vacancy that we, that we didn't fill. Um, I'm nothing against any of the people. Oh, I just think so you don't want all four to leave the same year. Exactly. Here. Because then you have very little expertise. So would you want to extend one, sh short one, and have two at the same time? Well, the, there were two in 14. It was, I think, Paul and someone else that expired in 14. 
Yeah, David Dancer expired this year. He did. So that's a, that's a good 18 then. And Susan would be an 18. So it must be Mauser. Richard Mauser must have been a 14. Yes? So why don't we, so why don't we take those two and even come out in 17? So, so he would be 17. Paul and Richard. Paul and Richard down to 17. So we have two 17s, two 18s, and Ernie would be the one 16. I'm happy with exactly. All right. So do you want an amend your motion? Or? Sure. Let's, let's, after considering uh, the discussion, let's, let's make an amendment to that motion to have Paul and Richard's terms appointment expire in 2017, just so we have a staggering of the membership on the board. Susan would be 18, Dan, D David Dancero 18, and Ernie would be 16. And that gives us some staggering. Make a motion. Okay, second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Super. Okay. So we need to. Um, I see you let them know about those changes and have them come in. Yeah, yeah. 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 I went all the way through. I like the chair, vice chair, so. Okay. I'll let them know that. Super. Hi. No one's going to speak us. Else. Rose, you got anything for us? You have to get long. That's old business. <laughs> all right. Um, correspondence. We only have the one that we, everything was just except that one. Okay. Um, we, the town, had previously deeded two lots over on, um, in, um, Drew Park. Drew Park. Drew Park. Drew Park. Thank you. And uh, so technically, the town has owned those properties for a, a year plus. Um, the owner, the previous owners, have requested to buy those lots back. We've given them the necessary information to do so, and they have sent us checks and have repurchased lots 4B, 4C, uh, contained on tax map number 18. We'll get the funds over to um, explain to our council and make sure everything is done properly with the deeds and filed in the courts. So oh, it would be amount of yeah. okay. um, Roughly? It's going to be roughly $29,000 total. Okay. That includes attorney fees. Well, you're doing pretty good as a new chairman. You're bringing in this money. Money. I'm going to give this to Jessica. And then she can figure out maybe take copies of the checks, copies of the letter, and then get the checks to Rose. No, that goes Mary Lou. We go to Mary Lou. But don't you need to register? And do you need to do anything on, on your as far as tax? No, it's not. Not on the, our tax rolls. It's on the town's rolls. So. Once, once the town takes the property, the tax collectors are out of it. The town owns it. It becomes okay. a general fund transaction. And so then once it gets redeeded, then you update your records to the deeding bill goes out. Yep. When the deed gets recorded, Jessica updates the assessing system. Okay. That will update the tax collect system. Right. They'll be back on the tax rolls. So Jessica, give me those back. <laughs> and I'll put them in the lockbox for Mary Lou. Yep. And okay. who's, who's going to talk to the lawyer about getting the deeds drifted? Um, I will take a copy letter and I will send a copy to Laura. You guys could cut some deeds? We do have to do some meeting. All right, but the checks will stay here and only a copy of the letter will go with me. Sound good? Yeah. All right, no other correspondence. Uh, we had a relatively short meeting last week, so we got some minutes to approve for March 24th, 2015. Make a motion to accept them as written. Okay. Um, I will second the motion. Rich was not in attendance, so um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. So the minutes are approved as drafted. Any public comments? No, okay. okay. The treasurer cannot be here tonight. Tax collector, Rose. Okay. Um, update on the leading and deeding situation. Um, we are still scheduled, according to the letters we, we put out, to uh, uh, do the leading and deeding, both activities, on the 17th, the week from Friday. As of today, there are still four properties, three people, 
uh, on our list to be deeded. One of them is the person, though, that we have the agreement with. So as long as she's keeping up with that, I understand we're not going to do that deeding. Um, there's 52 parcels that are up for leading, I would say, given the repeats of somewhere around maybe 20-ish people involved. Um, that's multiple years or one year? That would be the 2014 unpaid taxes. That's what we would be leading on the 17th. And, and the dollar amount? You can tell us that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So for the, uh, the prop total tr properties for the deeding is uh, almost $11,000 owed. And for the leading of the 2014 taxes, that's 76000 And there's one year missing, 13? I don't have information here, but that one's already been leaned. Yeah, so that's already been leaned. Well, so. she showed me the number. I just wanted to tell the board it's around $110,000 that we're owed, which is really, a, the number's really coming down. It used to be closer to a quarter of a million. Yeah, that's 250 before. Yes, so it's, it's really shrinking. One question. What, for somebody to have a lien placed on the property, how far behind do they need to be in the taxes? We can lien the 2014 taxes, um, I think it's any time after like 90 days after the tax, the last tax bill was due, the, the approximate number. Just for clarification for anybody watching. Okay, thank you. Any, any new taxes and you want to pay no? We just got, I just uh, deposited 9000 today and I think I deposited somewhere around 15000 last week. Yeah. And I have office hours on Friday. Okay. Thank you, Rose. The administrative assistant. Um, Probably assessor clerk. All right, well, nothing for administrative assistant. <laughs> I have a land use change tax um, that I filled out for a property that was purchased at Drew Farm. So um, if you could sign page two at the top, we'll be collecting 4500 for land use change. And what would a land use change be? When someone purchases a property that was in current use, if they, yeah, if they no longer have 10 acres. So therefore, we okay. change the use of the land. So this lot was sold to be built on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no building permit yet. But. Yeah, but mm -hmm. good. And who pays that, there. the seller the or the buyer? Yeah. And that's all I have. Thank you. Do we? <laughs> How do we know? Do you, do you keep a log of these? All of a sudden, we're getting rid of a bunch of current use checks, change taxes. Do you keep a log? We've got three or four. Two. Two? And we had a couple of years last year. You just watch them to make sure that we. That we, we get so, they're just so infrequent that I just know. Um, but, Diana has these copies and um, they're also recorded. So it, it's just... Just don't want to lose the money. Because we forget to issue it, right? We have it yet, but we're getting busy. Okay. <laughs> okay, so $4,500 in taxes. Yep. Good. Planning board, eh? Nothing new to report. The next meeting is April 16th. Okay, April 16th. Uh, code enforcement, road agent's not here, but I can attest he's been filling in puddles, fast and furious. Um, there was going to be discussion to talk about road um, prioritization for projects this upcoming year, but we'll obviously table that till Eddie is um, at the next meeting. Unless you guys want to talk about it now, just for points of discussion. He told me he was going to get some quotes on both segments of Stoneham Road this coming Thursday. So we'll have some data for you, yeah. for the board, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, because we asked them last meeting to get that together before, for the next meeting that we're all here, but we bumped this one up, so he, he just wasn't. And I did drive, drive both of the roads today just to see what they were like. And uh, one wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but both had issues that needed to be addressed. So. Mm -hmm. 
after going over Bryant Road and Wolf Road to get there. I'm telling you, these are nice. Yeah. Oh, I thought my car was going to fall apart. But I think it was maybe it was around. I think it was Bryant. Bryant, where the railroad tracks. Yes. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, I think you need attention. Right. Um, okay. So that is on the docket. It's not being forgotten. Roads of, and if anyone has any issues, call one of your selectmen. We'll immediately get in touch with the road agent. Conservation. Yes. Okay. They're, they're planning to have a cleanup the last Saturday of the month. 25th. I believe it's the 25th. And they'd love for the selectmen to host a breakfast before the 9 o'clock cleanup. We have water again. We have water again. And hot water also. We know the septic's working one way or the other. It's it's been pumped, so we yep. we have the ability to. Okay. Um, do we have another meeting before the twenty fifth? Yes. Yeah, we do. All right. Let's plan on it. You guys agree? Yeah. 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 They're going to have to clean up at nine, giving giving us room for a breakfast if we want to have one at seven thirty or nine. Okay. We will do it. And that board is also going to have to give us a list of new appointments. I think we've got some people that expired in 2015, and people don't recognize it's town meeting of 2015 that the expiration took place. Um, they haven't done this? Well, they, they scrubbed the data, and then we, when we looked at it, I said, oops, we, had a re, we have to reappoint. So and, and Tom Hill's really a point person on that. Right? Yeah, he'll get us the numbers, okay. the names. All right. Yep. So we'll plan the breakfast on the 25th, 7.30 to 9. We'll work out the logistics between the three of us and get the word out there. Nothing emergency manager-wise. Snow on the ground still for Marginal, four. marginal. I'm sure they're going to say burning permits are going to be required shortly. Shortly, but you haven't heard anything from Wakefield? Not yet. Okay. It's still pretty wet, so. Heritage, um, they've scrubbed the meeting for April. And uh, we might be looking at May as our next meeting for our heritage. They script May too. I know. I was waiting to save that. <laughs> All right, April and May have been scrubbed. They put the heritage. they put the blur bell. Okay, if it's official. That's good enough. Cemetery. I think. Not heard about. They should be having a meeting somewhere along the line. We did get that email from Craig about the. Um, cost to survey it, right? Yep. You know, that was the only bid we got to survey it thus far? Or the only quote? Ooh, I, I don't even think they're going out for any additional quotes because that surveyor did all the preliminary work. So he only has to do the work from where he left off. Yeah. Going forward, anybody else going in is going to be much more have significant. To, have to go first. I don't know. When did he send the email? Three, four weeks before uh, the last meeting. Yeah, that was about a month ago. Okay. Um, and, and we haven't heard where that stands. They get that, you know, granted the snow is just finally getting down to it. They're waiting for us to, to sign the contract and give them $500 to get us in the list. Okay. What, is, the, what is the sequence run if we are looking at a piece of property? I know we have to pay for serving it, but do we need to have anything in writing from the person we're buying it from? I would imagine we need like a purchase and sales type agreement, I would think. Right, but otherwise we'd be just surveying her property. Yeah, we're doing a whole bunch of nothing. So I think we need to get Craig in at the next meeting and see if you can give us some insight. I, I guess my feeling is he gave us the contract. What are we going to ask for? The contract specifies exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, but do we need to have a purchase and sales agreement in place? That's up to us. Do we want one? We'll get one if we want one. I mean, I think we should have something. I think we should too. Uh, I mean, it can't be specific because we don't know the exact bounds and everything. Mm -hmm. Something. I'll I'll talk to Mrs. Hunter. She said she signed anything we have to do to get moved along. So I'll get a purchase and sale sign. Yeah, because the purchase and sale is a pretty standard one page thing that we could get done. Difficult to define the land. Right, right. Um, but I will get that done. Yeah, and, and and it's it's been all hinged upon being able to walk there. So right now we, we haven't done a heck of a lot, but I can imagine there's some prep work that needs to be done outside of getting on the land for them, right? What the letter said, I, I believe, was to reserve your slot in the queue. Right. Because they haven't been doing any work all winter. Right, I think it's good. Yeah. So we need to get the contract printed out 
signed and a deposit ready for them to get that going. We can do that tonight. We could. Because it's emailed to us. Yeah. We've all got a copy, so we just have to print that out, take a look at it if we have it. And then give Mary Lou a... Go and, ahead, Brian. And Yeah, because that, that's what I'm getting. We just need an invoice uh, so we can begin to get that done. Um, or at least start it up. And if we're not going for any, any, any other bids because of the fact that this preliminary work's done, then let's, let's get it rolling. Well, well, that's my take. I mean, this, this company's done all the preliminary work. If we're going to say we're going out for bids, then someone has to start that process real soon. Right. Are you, and you got to go with the price? What was it, 20? No, the price was 8400 about. Oh, I didn't get that. Okay. Ooh. I think for that price, well, we should have to be. To get at least some other, I don't have a problem going, I see what you're saying, but that's a pretty hefty amount to spend for. That's, that's where I was going. I, I, I won't profess to know the cost of surveying land like that, I, and, 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 and that's why I just, if there's somebody that's a comfort level that knows that that price is competitive, then good, but if not, I think we're, you know, we're, we're just walking into something without knowing what really what the fair market is for surveying that land. Do you guys know how much surveying costs for something like that? I know it's a tough land to go surveying, it's old and but they're going in, in, in they're, well, they're see, carving out a piece out of a large see, chunk. See, the, the, the issue is our subdivision rig says the whole parcel's got to be surveyed. Okay. This company has done the whole parcel. That work's been done. We're going to go out for bids and the new company is going to have to survey the whole parcel. That's our subdivision rig. Mm -hmm. they, I don't believe that this company would give to the new firm all his work with respect to the, the work he's invested. That, that's my assumption. Right. I mean, I might be wrong. I think it'll be worth finding out if that you know, they have their own way of working around that. <clears throat> Um, can you reach out to Craig? And and, and just just get his insight on exactly that. Do we do we own the rights to what the previous work was done? Because is that our work product or is that his work product that we that work went to Mrs. Hunter? But it's on record. And we're taking a piece from that going. I don't a piece in the middle. I don't know if it was reported or not. I, I don't know that. I mean, I'm, I'm there may be an advantage of taking a section of the, in the middle because you're not touching either boundary, in a sense. Yeah, but they still need to know what the other boundaries are. I don't know what the problem mark them off, but I guess. You, you know, when you looked at, the, there's a couple of issues there that we have to talk to the planning board about when we move forward. Because our regs require us to do perk tests on the 250 acres we're not touching. That, that you commented on the perk tests. Mm -hmm. Well, that's on the land we're not taking. Right. That, that's our planning board regs. Maybe we can get them to waive it and save that cost. But right now, that surveyor looked at our regs and said, this is what you require. I'm going to do it. So we put that as part of the quote. Yeah, yeah. Does it make, does it make sense to get, well, no, all right, I'll, I'll stop there. Well, if, if we think that that price is fair, we should go with it, but I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm very ignorant to what it costs to survey land like that. Is, did we do the survey? Is it the same one that did uh, race drive for us? Don't know. It was, it was White Mountain. Yes, I thought it was. Well, it was White Mountain. White Mountain didn't, didn't do that one. I don't know who did this one. I think, I don't remember. Oh, I know where they're located, but I don't know. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, as I knew it wasn't like that. We could check. I mean, it'd be worth checking with my to see what they have to say. We've dealt with them before. If they're in business to do there, so I mean, if nothing else, we just jump over that information. That, that at least give us something to go on. You know, they could, you know, we don't just close the quote, but we could ask them for an estimate. And just make a call, explain to them. The 250 acres, we're looking to carve two acres out, so on and so forth. I mean, five acres, four? 
Oh, sorry. Five, 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 five. Five. We're making a two-acre deal. Yeah, that's right. Um, that book? Oh, sure. All right, just before we sign into something, and then yeah. come and find out we're overpaying or something like that. It very well might be a great deal. We're doing, the sub, we're doing the subdivision, right? That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're just going to table that for now until we get more information. Then maybe by the next meeting we'll be prepared to either sign it or. Now, uh, is there a way around us doing this for the town? I know there's some things you get bypass if it's a town. And since we're spending town money, is there a way to say this doesn't apply to us? You're talking about the planning board rates? Yeah. I mean, you can do different setbacks. The town can get away with a lot of other things. I mean, it's really not a good practice to have, but in this case, we're putting it in a cemetery. We're not on a boundary of somebody else's property. I mean, there are a lot of things in here that... Uh, I was going to take the contract that they mailed to us to the next planning board meeting and say, your point, it's our money, <coughs> what do we need? What do we need done to protect the town in this situation? Would they leave us certain parts? So by then we'll have, the next planning board is the 16th. I have the contract, we all have the contract right yeah, now, so we can use that, I'll use that one as the foundation. Right, but we go to the planning board, talk to them on, this, on the 16th, see if there's any red flags that come up, you can talk to Land Tech, okay. and then by next meeting we'll have some more information. Fine. Sound good? They don't want to get a purchase and sale. Yes, I, I think we should go in anyway. We don't have to go, we should have something just to show. So we're going to give her $100 or something? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, so we'll give Mary Lou the way to check for that, just to get it firmed up. Okay. The wording is needed for one that's not specific, but at least she'll cooperate in something. Okay, yeah. Right. Okay. Town clerk, what's that? Website, we're good till June. On the boards of committees, nothing going on there. Old business. Um, the one item, well, I think a couple items on there. One was new flags or new flag. The flag on the pole is looking pretty tattered. Um, do we know what size flag is? So it's a one. Is it three by five? Yeah, I agree with you 100% because I drew the same conclusion and it was pointed out to me that I think we got that flag from the Senate. So I think if we wrote, a, if we knew the size of that flag, I think Ernie Brown got that flag for us, didn't he? I believe that's I, did, he, I believe he did too. Yeah. So if we wrote a letter to our Senator, tell her the size of the flag, we might get a flag that flew in the Capitol or, or down that way someplace. All right. Um, I will write to... We got, two, we got two, right? So we'll measure the size of the flag, and I think Ernie got us that flag. No, I think he did. Yeah. I will, before I reach out to our senators, I will just check with Ernie to see if his knee can send him how that was done. Right. And I will write a letter to both our senators, see if they can help us out. Okay. Um, I, I, I know we tackled this in the past, boat registrations. And I was talking to the assistant clerk, and she said there's no reason we can't do bow registrations without costing us any money. And I said, we, talk, we had tackled this in the past, I forget where we stood. I knew we said no, but why did we say no? Were we afraid of additional software or fees? We didn't, I don't think we understood <clears throat> the upside potential. Um, Virginia caught me also. We, Jennifer caught you, Virginia caught me and pointed out that we're talking about when we register a boat, the, there's two components. There's the state registration, just like your car, and there's a tax portion. If you register your boat in the mail, the state gets the registration and the tax portion. If we did it here, the state would get the registration, the town would get the tax, person, the tax portion, which is significantly more in three dollars. Mm -hmm. it's, it's at least double digits now, 20, 30, 40 dollars per boat. So Virginia caught me and said, we can do it. We need, to, we need to drive down to Concord for an hour's worth of training and we have all the software to do it and we're going to start recovering these tax dollars. Yeah, because according to Jennifer, the amount of boats we have in the town is not like Wolfboro, but 
even a couple dozen boats, it's it's revenue that we're missing out on. And it can be any boat. It doesn't have to be a boat from the town. Anybody right. And I have a boat. Yeah, like I was going to go to Wakefield Ranch to my boat, but I'd rather do it here if we could. Because we'll get the tax. We'll get the tax, yeah. In whatever fee we want to charge to do it, which would be a few bucks. Um, I'm still dubious of the whole thing, but that's all right. <laughs> what was that? I still have my concerns with these one of these things that sound great, and then all of a sudden you're sending people for training, you've got to redo it every couple, every year, you've got to do this and that. And I really wonder, in the end, if we knew the number she was talking about, we're going to bring in, you know, $500, and we're bringing in $5,000. Do you have any idea? What you mentioned? The amount of cost, as far as the amount of tax you get from the kind of boats you'd be registering, I don't, I don't think you'd be looking at thousands. You know, from what I heard from Jennifer, an average boat's 30 bucks, 40 bucks, plus a little fee you want to tack on to it. A lot of people come in, they register their trailer, they can register the boat, they're doing it all one shot, and so our, our clerk's are already tied up doing it. Doing one more thing is probably not the biggest problem. They were the numbers you were talking to, about mm -hmm. 20 to 30 to 40, based upon the value of the boat. Right. And she saw the other clerks doing it. See, she, she was meeting with some of the other clerks in the area, and they sort of suggested to her that... <coughs> we're going to need a new computer and a new printing machine and a new... <laughs> That's what I asked, because I, I, I explained to her that we, were, we, we had some trepidation about doing that. And she's like, it's all right here. It's all ready to go. We're, we're set up to do it. And, and I was like, oh, I forget why, but let me bring it up again. Um, if it's a matter of a little bit of training for the, for the two clerks, then... I, she hit me as, it's a great opportunity for the town. A couple of hours of training, and we can start bringing some money in. The way she hit me. Yeah, instead of sending people to Wakefield, Wolfboro, or having them mail it into Dover, it's just... We can always back out. I mean, we can all stop it. We can tell the state we don't want to do it. Make your motion. Well, I'll make a motion that we support the town clerk in her endeavor to support uh, boat registrations in town. Well, I think we'll figure out fees and whatnot. Well, the fee, I think, is state is $3. Just take the three. All right, I have a second. <laughs> Did you hear you? For me. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, this shows we don't always have both set, so this is good. Virginia? Aye. All right. So, so the one doll pins coming to you. You're going to call Virginia. She's your favorite town kind of cleric. You see her on Fridays. <laughs> I'll tell her, she'll be happy. All right, pass along. Um, well, I, I guess I beat you to the punch in the cemetery land. That's fine. fine, that's fine. We have, we have some action items. Summer maintenance. Who wants to talk about summer maintenance? Uh, rumor has it the snow's going to melt and the grass is going to turn green. Okay. Not what I heard. It's not looked like that way. Uh, so we have to deal with cutting the lawn. Remember, we terminated. We terminated that employment of that. Uh, we did. That last company individual. So how do we want to attack it? Do we want to put the words out, see if we can get some? If we get bids, we got to be very formal. If we try to find some local people in town that might be willing, we can do it informally. Um, there's somebody in town that I think might be interested in doing not just summer maintenance, but might be willing to do more than just cutting grass. Um, I can approach him. He's a neighbor. He's a Brookfield resident. I'm okay. And just, I, can, I can meet him down here one day after work or on a Saturday and try to just give him the lowdown of what we would typically do and see if, how, would, how much money he'd be willing to do it for. I lived in a town in Vermont, we're going back a number of years, and they put sheep out. Sheep. And they put a little fence around it, and the sheep mowed it and, and fertilized it as they went along. Do the sheep eat snow? <laughs> <laughs> so we can take care of the grass, the snow, well, that's another story. Okay. Well, barring this work, we'll, we'll look into the sheep idea, Bill. Yeah. All right, so I will talk to this gentleman, yes, and, um, and then I'll get back to you. I have a lot of trouble.
Peterson who's tried the sheep on the right away didn't work out so well. Didn't work so well? <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> I'm sure there's some folks. They just, kept, they just kept going, huh? You didn't have your shepherds <laughs> thing on? I'm just writing myself a note. Uh, Alright. Townhouse roof. Um, that's on there. I had, I didn't know you folks talked about it two weeks ago. Well, I, I at the planning board meeting that I pinched it for you, I talked to Gary before the meeting. I said, we really want to get on somebody's list. And he's got his guy that does roofs. I said, we just want a number. You know, so Gary started doing squares and this and that. I said, Gary, we want a number. Uh, so he was going to speak with his roofing contractor once the snow was off the roof, which was pretty much over there at that point. So I have not heard from Gary as of yet. And then maybe he was, we haven't seen him, or maybe he isn't his roofer out there yet. But I think we should definitely keep on him because we want to get that roof done. Yeah, and I think we need a couple of things. We had to, someone has to, and maybe if we get the contractor to do it in, in addition to a roofer, we have some chimneys we don't use any longer that have to be patched. We have the old furnace chimney from the old oil burner that's still sticking up to the roof. I don't know whether a roofer patches holes like that. These are big holes. Or we have to get a contractor in before that to patch the roof. These, they're down. Well, there's, no, they're up. We're not using them, but they're still through the roof. I'm, I'm thinking about the one in the school that said was taking down something. No, they're, they're, they're still through the roof. There's two of them. Through the roof. Yeah, we have the other two that are in the townhouse. But yeah, but those will leave, right? Yeah. But there's the old oil burner stack. Yeah, maybe not. It's just not in use anymore. Yeah, it's just waiting for a leak. So someone has to patch that now. It's a big hole. Does, well, it, does a roofer do it? I don't know. A roofer does sheeting on roofs and puts down wood, you know. Okay. I would imagine uh, As well as we get that addressed, right? Because I don't want the roofer to come and say, well, I was going to do that. Right, 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 right. We want that part of the quote. Is the Heritage Commission on board with taking down the chimneys? Well, the, this is the old metal chimney. I'm just asking you a question. I don't, I don't think it's a problem. I think the Heritage should have made it clear that as long as the, we don't do metal roof and we don't do architectural shingles and, and do any kind of roof line alterations, they, they never cared about modernistic chimneys because that's, those are modern chimneys. The old, the old brick one we took down. Remember, we just, we just yeah. saved it up through this, through yeah. the ceiling. Um, do you see Gary at all? I will try to find him. I, would, I think we should keep pushing too. Get it done. I'll yeah. save it on the 16th for sure. Well, all right. Know. So the worst case, if um, we don't see him before, then let's let's see if he's had his guy up there and, and then confirm the hole in the roof deal. Let's see if back roof. Front roof, steeple roof. The steeple, I guess, is going to be. Let's have the let's have the roofer weigh in on that if it's needed. Because speaking with Gary and looking at it, you know, from just the ground perspective, it looks fine. Because it's not a heated roof, so he says those shingles will last double the age of a roof that's heated. You know, under a over a heated space. Um, he did also caution that you said doing that steeple roof, the cost could get pretty steep pretty quick because of the amount of equipment and extra time that it's going to take to get up there. So if the steeple's holding together and it looks good, and if the roofer can look at it and say it looks fine to him, then maybe we forego doing the, the steeple roof. I would think that we would at least have the price so we have something in place to say that this costs this. Right. I'd, I'd, I'd like to know if it's only a thousand bucks more, maybe we do it, but if it's five thousand dollars or then we maybe we make a decision not to do it. So we'll get the data. Yeah. 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 All right, so you'll talk to Gary? Yes. Okay. New business. Review of committee membership. And when I put that on there, I was talking about making sure that, like we had tonight for the ZBA, and that I noticed for the conservation, that all our committees are up to date with respect to expiration dates, and that we update the website, all the pages on the website, to make sure they reflect that. And that's, that's what I was talking about. So. <coughs>
No, well, the officials list. But there's no dates on it. I looked at that. On the list. officials list? There's oh. not even no dates at all. It is email, committee, but no dates. And that's when I went to the website to see if I could get the dates, and I recognized some of the dates were in the past. So we have to scrub that. I don't know what's the best way to do that. I mean, if you any ideas? Well, a lot of times I go to Virginia because she swears people in and writes it down on her little cards, she said. So we're going to do that. And then we should send an email out to all the chairs. Could you get sworn back in? Pardon me? Could you get sworn in? Yes. So you're going to do that? I think you're going to. OK. OK. Well, you know, we need expiration dates and web pages. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, 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 no. yeah, I did it last year, I remember. After the town meeting, we did that just so that I would get the uh, information. Okay. And then building on, uh, we're all set there? With that? Yeah, I think Jessica's got the extra. Okay. Mm -hmm. Building on private roads. Okay, the reason I put that on there, uh, our zoning that we approved this year, we, we put an amendment in that says, People can build on private, approved private roads. And, I, and it's up to the selectmen to define what an approved road is, per se. I thought it would be good for us to document what we think an approved private road looks like before someone comes to us and says, I'd like to build on a private road. And then it starts to look arbitrary. So if we go up front and say, this is what the characteristics of a private road are, and it would give, then we can use that. Now to support that, I put each one of your mailboxes. So they can all read about it. It's all about the RSAs so and what the town's responsible for and liable for on private roads. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can hit the discussion in, in two weeks or three weeks. Okay. I also went to the website to say, tell me about minimum specs for private roads. I don't know, I don't know what minimum specs are. They had quite a list of websites you could go to to see what the specs should be for private roads. I think some are pretty extreme. But it gave you a place to start. What's the definition of a private road versus a driveway versus a class six road with everything? It's whatever we want. And that's part of the problem. What's our definition in this town? We don't have one. So we are liable for someone to come and say, this is a driveway. Some, one, one argument says, if it's more than 150 feet from your point of access, it becomes a road. In other words, driveways are less than 150 feet. And there's specs for driveways. Good reading. Good reading, but they, they bring all these situations up. So, and, and then the other concern is even if it's a private road, the police, the ambulance, the fire will try to go down it. And you could lose your equipment down there if it's not built to some sort of specs. Uh, I think the town has an ordinance that says before you build on a private road, you fill out a form. And it, they recommend it here. And you record that form up at the county seat, which reduces the town's liability. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we ever implemented that ordinance. Because I know a lot of people live on private roads, and I'm not sure if that's ever been done, which puts the town a bit at risk. Do we know how Wakefield handles this? I would ever talk to the fire chief. Mm -hmm. And we just couldn't hook up with data. That's why I went to the web. Okay. And most of the stuff on the web has to do with fire prevention requirements to make sure that emergency vehicles can get in there. Okay. So I, I didn't send you the web links, but when you get done reading that, yeah. if you go minimum road requirements on the web, yeah. very interesting. Very interesting what we should be doing to protect the town. I was just looking to use, we use Wakefield for our fire police and whatnot, so I thought maybe we could mirror them. But if they, I did too. They don't I, have something. I did too, but then they, if they just turn to the, to the fire code, which is one of the web hits I mm -hmm. have. Okay. But we don't have anything. So if someone says, I want to build on a private road, what do we say? At that point, it becomes arbitrary. So I'd like to get ahead of that. that that's where I'm coming from. All right. So. Digest this and talk next. Me sure. Okay. Thank you. Any other new business? No. 
No, 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 it's just a track about. Bill's the one who signs up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Are you doing public comment? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I was late, uh, and I jumped into an interesting discussion about the, the cemetery land and so forth. Um, and I, I apologize if this was already discussed before I came in. Um, so I didn't realize that the five acres has, wasn't already carved out of, a, I thought it was a discrete par piece of parcel already defined. Um, so in listening to what part of the discussion I did hear, one question did come to mind in that it struck me odd that the town would be responsible for carving this out. Especially when it, it comes down to needing to do things on the entire parcel, potentially. Um, so you mentioned that it becomes a subdivision. Is it not possible for a landowner to petition to split a parcel out of an existing lot without it being a subdivision, or does it automatically become a subdivision? In this town, it's a subdivision. If we owned adjacent land, it could be a lot line adjustment, but we don't own adjacent land. She is allowing us to, to somewhat pick the spot that we want. So we have leeway in this. It's not, it's the general area that's defined, not the specific, you know, 400 feet from this wall. So we have some leeway in moving in a little bit here or there in the depth. And the, that must be then why you talked about the park test, because that's probably part of the decision making process and where it's located. We've done, we've done test pits where we want to put a cemetery. But the quote that we received from the surveyor states that our subdivision regs require test pits on the land we're not buying. Okay, that's what I said, okay. <laughs> that, that's why we're questioning maybe we do it exempt. Maybe we can get that waived. Yeah. Because at every test pit he's going to have a soil engineer come in just per our, per our requirements. So. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Um, I have another another question or concern. Mm -hmm. um, it, in the short time that I listened to the discussion, there were three discussions about the town spending money and how do we find, do, do we go out to bid? There was the issue of the survey, there was the issue of taking care of the lawn, and I'm confused about the townhouse issue. Mm -hmm. And it struck me that I, I don't know if the town has a procurement policy that requires competitive bids or competitive procurement in some fashion. Um, un under a certain dollar amount, no. We're not required to. Do you know what that dollar amount is? Is it two? $250,000. It's, it's a pretty steep amount. Oh. So with relatively small amounts, it, the board has the ability to maneuver and pick upon a particular bid as we see fit, or we just go and get a proposal and we make a public meet and we agree upon it. Okay. So I have a couple corollary questions. Mm -hmm. um, and just a suggestion on the, the surveying issue. Mm -hmm. If it were out to bid, then if there was already a surveyor that has certified that they've done the entire parcel, most likely they're going to be the lowest bid. So perhaps if you solicited, I mean, it doesn't have to be a formal bid, I don't think, since evidently mm -hmm. there's no rules that require a formal bid for that small amount of money, but um, at least soliciting, which I think it sounds like you've already decided to do that, soliciting quotes well, from, from, different, from different vendors. We're, we're, we're going to uh, another surveyor that has done work for us on the roads in order to at least get some information to see if we feel we have a competitive number from the current surveyor that did the preliminary work of it for us. Um, and, and how we picked that original surveyor was due to reputation of doing other work similar to it, it wasn't a bidding process in that original part as well. So the real question is, if that original work 
can't be transferred to another survey, then we might we may have thrown good money after bad if we can't move it. So we want to see if we can, and if we can, will that next bid be competitive or better than? I thought that the survey that you were talking about was done by Mrs. Hunter. No, it was done by a survey brought on for this okay. particular. All right, I misunderstood. Um, and regarding the townhouse, is uh, I, I don't know what the ori original agreement was with um, Gary for getting the work done. Um, was he responsible? Was his quote including the roof? And, and he's just waiting for a go-ahead, or is no, this completely we, separate? This is completely separate. We, we've we've maintained that we've had to do the roof. In last year, it was strongly identified that the roof project needed to be done, um, with the idea that we would need to fund it for this upcoming year. We've now funded through the town meeting. We use the name Gary because he, as a contractor, has many subcontractors that he knows and he trusts and he, he'll get a very competitive bid for us. So we say, Gary, can you get your roofer over here for us, knowing that we're getting a quality roofer because of Gary's experience and we know that we're going to get a competitive bid and Gary will be able to eyeball it for us, give us his 10 cents that it's worth. I'd, I'd like to add, I think if you look the building over there, we put a lot of things out for a bit. We put the heating system out for a bit. Um, I think there's a number of things that we have the painting that we have to bid. So we don't, quite often, more than not, we do go with the competitive. Okay, all right, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Um, and one of the third issue um, on the last item that you discussed about the private roads, I think that's great that you're trying to get ahead of the issue. Um, but one question that popped into my head was, well, there's private roads that have been approved in town in the past. Do we know what the historical reference point was for saying, yeah, we recognize this as a road, or just recognizing it is not the same as approval? I don't, I don't know. I mean, you've looked through all the RSAs, but I'm just wondering if there's any history in town that, that we, we might help guide the process. That was my only comment. Do you know any? No. I mean, the only new road that I know of is is the Drew Farm. You know, well, that's that a sub, that's okay. That's a subdivision. There's all kinds of specs on that. It's it's when you have a parcel. Oh, and just you decide you want to put a road through it and not subdivide it. Okay. As soon as you say subdivide it, we've got regs. Okay. And you take a parcel, and I want to build my house on my parcel. That's when it starts to get great. Okay. Right. I'd like to make just a comment about that because well, I have a 1,200 foot driveway. Yeah. Mine is better than the town road, but most driveways that length are not. That's right. I think as a town and as a board, you're going to have your hands full if you start messing around with somebody that wants to build six, seven hundred feet off the road and you're telling them that they have to do X, Y, and Z. Because then the people buying the property will say, I'm not buying this town, because I don't want to go through this aggravation and expense. So, you know, it's something to consider. Because if somebody had told me I had to build it to certain specs and all that when I was building the house, I wouldn't have done it. I mean, I have the wherewithal to do so, and I like things a certain way. But in my job, I've been down a lot of long driveways. And most of them are horrible. And that's just the way it is, you know. That's not two cents. No, and, and that's fair enough because we, we, we can't stop saying we want the Autobahn, you know, as a driveway, but by the same stretch, you know, you need to take into into consideration the safety for municipal services that need to respond or private services that need to respond and you know, so what's the What's the, what's the real tipping point? Is it, hey, if you can pull a bulldozer down a road, then that's a road, or do you have to have it gravel? Do you need to have it based, you know, a certain width, certain clearance? I think that's what we need to at least get firmed up so we don't, we don't ultimately come into a problem where somebody's calling a footpath a driveway, when, you know, but yeah, I, I think your point is well made that, you know, we can't get overly bearing on people to say we want 
you know, these specs if you don't meet the specs then you can't do it. So it's a and the other issue is is over time, say like if I sold my property, which I maintain every fall, I trim it every fall. Who does that? Right? So you could you could force specs down somebody's throat and then go there in ten years or twenty years and tell them what that driveway looks like. Mm -hmm. You know? The gravel, half of it's gone. The trees have grown in, so you get a tunnel. I mean, you can't control all of these things, you know. And do you have a right to go on and inspect it? You have a right to tell do somebody you? that they have to upgrade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. about questions. You know. I should make you a copy of this. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, there must be great points. Why this is stuff that this is part of. Like I said, I see you know, tons of driveways in oh, up and they're using them for else. Uh, over time, they become eroded and grown in, and the people just don't have the money to maintain it or the inhibition, you know. Um, th this was prefaced with the zoning changes. Um, and if I remember correctly, the zoning change was that uh, well, I don't remember exactly how it was phrased. But if somebody were to, like this gentleman just mentioned, he has a long driveway, he, as long as he has the appropriate frontage on an approved road, that's a non-issue because he has his lot has frontage on, on a, an approved road, mm -hmm. which is not his driveway. He's just made a long driveway at that point. Where it becomes an issue is if he then were to choose to subdivide <coughs> his property and claim it as a road, and perhaps that's where you need to have the distinction. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes, yes, saying? They, and they, they address, it, it they address that in this document. Okay. Um, the footage on a, on a public road is to assure proper access. And let me see if I can find it. Uh, I should make you a copy. It's <laughs> very, very good reading. Good reading. Um, While well, you're doing it, just to figure out what a class six road was. No. <laughs> You'll know when you're on one, but that is. Can I ask permission to leave? I have an appointment oh. to be at at seven thirty. Since we're pretty much. We're just about ready to wrap up, so you'll just be leaving a little early. You're good. Okay, thank you. You didn't need permission from me because I know. Okay. <laughs> My wife will kill me for that at this meeting. <laughs> See you, Bill. Okay. Bye. But just as a point of discussion, I agree. I don't want to have the town interfering with my rights as a property owner in any form or fashion. I just want to be sure that if ultimately somebody's trying to do something that becomes a problem, we can at least rely upon something and say, what you're doing is, is iffy at best. So I, I, I think that's where Rich is going with this, that we need to, if, if there is something that we can do to, to keep the town at least from looking arbitrary in granting building permits when something may not be suitable, then I think we need to have something to rely upon. But by the same stretch, I don't want to have to tell someone how they are going to do their driveway. If they want to have a dirt path, then fine. That's their deal. But I, I think we just need to figure something out. <laughs> you got to read the RSAs. you got to read the RSAs. There are some requirements that the board has. So. Uh, I'll make copies for you folks because it is very, very informative. And, I, and my point was, I didn't want to look arbitrary, so I wanted to be ahead of it with something, so that if someone came in and said, for example, if you're going to build on a private road, the selectmen have to approve the building permit. We have to say yes. We don't do that today. It just happens. So we have we have to make sure we've, and it says here we're supposed to do that for private roads. So we're supposed to be following the RSAs, and I just want to make sure we start doing it. But building on a private road is, th that's if there's frontage only on a private road. And that's what the zoning was about. The, the zoning change was, so, it, 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 again, it's only if you're, it sounds like really, it's only when there's a division of the property so that now the, or, um, because that related to lots, if I remember correctly, the zoning change was a lot has to be, a buildable lot has to be, have frontage, X number of feet of frontage on a approved public or private road. So... Don't remember, but you might be right. Yeah, so I, I, 
I, I'd still like to look at the FRSAs that you're talking about. I'll give up. It's good. Thank you. Hmm. All right. Well, it's something we'll talk about next meeting. More, I'm sure. And it might get more people upset than not, but let's at least figure it out. Okay. Anything else to discuss or any other comments? You can turn. You got it. All right. I'll make copies. You make copies. All right. I can make a copy of this letter and I'll make a copy of the checks and blah, blah, blah.